Okay, so let's suppose that you have looked all this over and you think this is a worthwhile endeavor that you're willing to put a little bit of time into and you want to uh, type in one of these exams into exam view. First thing you want to do is you want to look at the Regents exam database. Now this is the first one, so there's no entries here. Let's go ahead and add an entry. And what I've done, or at least what I've decided to do after looking at the directory of exams, is to work on exam number 12 the 1980 June exam. At this point it certainly hasn't been checked for accuracy. Uh, it is now in progress because I'm going to be typing this in and there's no files yet. As far as a person or a contributor that would be Dan Hosey, me. And if I wanted to I can make comments. I'm just going to save and view and this will now show up in the database if I look at this. So then what I would do is I would go and I would download the uh, PDF file. Even though these are available other sources, to keep consistent with these numbers, I recommend downloading it from here. And I would look for exam 12 because that's the one I picked. And it'll take a second to download. And when it does, what you want to notice is there is actually the answers at the end the last page or two, I would print those out and just have a hard copy uh, handy. It makes it a little bit easier to uh, do the data entry. Now these exams, especially the earlier ones, the ones before mm, about 1999, are just uh, scans that are images. So there's no ability really to copy or paste. So it really is uh, an old-fashioned just type it out. Um, that said, you're actually going to want to open this um, in your own uh, PDF browser, usually Adobe Acrobat for most people, so I'm going to save this directly. And the reason you want to do that is that gives you access to uh, the snapshot uh, tool that will allow us to take uh, images and put those into the exam. So we'll take a second for this to open up, Let's see if this opens up in Adobe this time. And now that's open in Adobe, you see this snapshot toolbar up here. If that's not there, you can right click um, and somewhere in here you can add it as a toolbar if it's not there. This newest version of Adobe confuses me, but I, I managed to get it on. In the older versions, it was really easy. And if you look here, let's just say I was going to start with question one, like you should. What you'd want to do is you'd want to open up the test view or exam view program, you would want to start a new uh, database or, or question bank I should say and name it something uh, useful like exam 12 June 1980 exam something like that. And this might be exam 12. At this point you begin inserting questions uh, I like to use the, the shortcut key, Control N, brings this up, go down to uh, multiple choice, hit enter, and you can now start entering questions. As far as the best way to do that, what I like to do when I entered my first exam, what I did is I used a secondary monitor and put the PDF over there, but we can just share the screen like this, a little thinner, like so. Uh, a really important point is you need this to be at 100%, at least when you uh, copy any images. This way they're the appropriate size when you put them in. So if I was going to do question number one, I would just hit Control N, and we do want to do these in order, multiple choice, and I can just start typing, which is a vector quantity. It's worth taking a second to check. Acceleration due to gravity. Boring as watching paint dry. Now at this point uh, we need to know what the answer is. Now hopefully you can see the vector here is going to be acceleration. But 
if you don't want to take the time to think it through or you're worried about making any mistakes, you would go to the bottom of the PDF file to the answer key and, and use that. Um, that's why I like to print off the answer sheet. Uh, there are no images, so I don't need to put them in, and there are no narratives, meaning an image that goes with multiple questions or some set of instructions that goes with multiple questions. So at this point, I'm done. I just hit record. Then to enter the next question, question two, I would hit control N, like so. I would type away. I'm not going to do that. But the important thing is to see this snapshot tool. So again, if you click on the camera, notice this has to be at 100%. And you drag, like so. Actually, you know what? I think with the screen recording software may interfere with this. So you're going to have to use your imagination. Imagine I did this, copied it like this, and then I'm going to paste it over there. Something pause. So now I've just copied. And I can now paste it here like this. Or if I needed to, I could put it in the choices. It's really quite flexible. Um, and again, I would hit record. I can't enter a blank choice. So this is one that uh, we have it set to four choices. You've got to have four. There's some questions that have three. You'll want to you wanna change that give it an answer, hit record, move on to the next one. So you get the, get the idea here. I'm going to go over a little bit more of the nitty gritty uh, in a couple smaller clips, but I think you get the idea here. The thing to focus on I think is just accuracy. I, I'd much rather have a bunch of people do one exam and do it really well and have people just sort of speed through and, and, and have lots of errors. So the moral of the story is take your time. Let's do it right. I think this is a resource that could be valuable for a, a very long time.